Mm. It is my tube. It is your tube. It is everyone's tube. It's live on YouTube. Yes, here we go again. Welcome to another English addict live. Guess where we are live from? Can you guess where we are live from? <laughs> yes, you are right. We are live from the birthplace of the English language, which is, of course, England. Here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you really, really happy? Oh, look at those lovely teeth. Don't they look lovely and white? Mmm. Someone has been taking care of their teeth. They have been taking very good care of their teeth. And that is one of the things we are talking about today. We are talking all about teeth, also your mouth. In fact, we have lots of things to talk about today. Also, another thing I want to talk about. Have you ever had to sign a contract or something that it is binding? So when we say that something is binding, it means it is something you can't get out of. It is something that you are now attached to. So quite often, if you have to sign a contract, it means you have to read the contract and then you sign it. You make an agreement. It is something that is legally binding. You are bound by the contract. However, sometimes you have to be very careful Sometimes you have to make sure that you read something that we call. Well, here it is now on the screen. You have to check the small print. There it is. You have to check the very small writing at the bottom of the contract. Quite often when you sign something, there will be lots and lots of sentences and paragraphs and many, many words. And some of the words will appear in very small writing. And quite often that is the part of the contract that you have to read carefully, because if you don't read it carefully, you might get into a lot of trouble. So I always say before you sign a contract, before you click on anything, especially on the Internet, because many people nowadays are being caught out. They are being tricked into doing things they don't want to. Or things they didn't intend to do. Have you noticed that on the Internet? Whenever you go onto the Internet, if you open something for the first time, you normally have to click a button that says that you agree to all of the terms and conditions. For example, here on YouTube, you have to agree to all of the rules. So quite often you will have to click something that says that you agree with the rules, the terms and conditions, the things that you have to do, the things that you have to follow, all of the rules. However, sometimes the writing can be very small and quite often the agreement or the contract is long. So there are millions and millions and millions of words in the contract. So quite often we don't even bother to read it. We don't bother. We just click agree. However, sometimes doing that might not be a good idea. Hello to everyone. Oh, I don't know where to start. I have so many things to show you today. So many things. So before you sign your contract, don't forget, you have to make sure that you read the small print. You have to make sure that you look carefully at everything before you click 
or sign. So that is something that is interesting and also a nice little phrase in English there. Check the small print. Always check the small writing on a contract. If you don't, you might end up in a lot of trouble. Hey, guess what? <laughs> I'm so excited because when I woke up this morning, guess what I saw this morning outside? I will show you right now the scenery that greeted me this morning when I opened my curtain. Yes, this morning we had some snow. <gasps> yes, there it is now falling from the sky now that was this morning unfortunately the snow has stopped now but that was the view from my bedroom window this morning looking out across the landscape you can see that the snow was falling and oh i can't begin to tell you how excited i was i was really excited so as soon as i realized that there was snow falling I grabbed all of my cameras, every single one of them, <laughs> and I put them in different windows around the house. And there you can see the view that I saw this morning from my window as the snow came down. The snow was falling from the sky this morning when I opened my window. However, unfortunately it didn't last very long so the snow was only around for a short time so there you can see it so i had all of my cameras filming this morning's snow <laughs> unfortunately well it didn't last very long unfortunately so so i didn't have the snow for very long however while it lasted I was I was quite pleased in fact I was very happy to see the snow falling this morning when I woke up I can't begin to tell you how excited I felt I really did hello to everyone hello out there in YouTube land I hope you are feeling good yes we have made it all the way to the end of another week it's Friday Hmm there is nothing nicer than watching the snow fall it makes me feel very relaxed Hmm but unfortunately, I can't get too relaxed because I have a live stream to do. Yes, you can catch me every week, three times a week, Sunday, Wednesday and Friday from 2 p.m. UK time. There it is now on your screen. Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 p.m. UK time. And I suppose it's worth mentioning that we are now having this is our last live stream of February yes so this is the last live stream of February however I will be back with you on Sunday a brand new month will arrive on Sunday so I will be with you on Sunday the 1st of March and we have lots of very interesting things to talk about then to be honest with you lots of interesting subjects and of course <laughs> There he is behind me. Mr. Steve will be with us. He will. There he is. Where? There he is. Mr. Steve will be with us on Sunday, the 1st of March. And also, it is worth mentioning that next month, the clocks will be altering again for the beginning of British summertime. So lots of things happening in March, a very busy month. And of course, normally when we think of March, we think of springtime. So I'm really looking forward to all of that, to be honest. I can't wait. Hello to the live chat. Nice to see you here today as well. Lots of people already here. 
hello to vitas hello vitas nice to see you here today thank you for joining my live stream and also the live chat guess what you are first you are first on today's live chat so welcome welcome one welcome all to my live stream also hello to Eric hello Eric nice to see you here today as well Isabel Noemi hello Noemi nice to see you here can I just say my deepest condolences my condolences for the news of your cat which I didn't notice on my previous live stream so I can I send my condolences for your little cat that you lost last week Anna Kobe is here also Demutes also Koto hello Koto I like your name by the way Luis Mendez a big bonjour to you hello Tomek oh hello Tomek I haven't seen you for a while also Black Catch Gatcha hello to you nice to see you here today do you know quite often I am very intrigued I would love to find out what your names mean on the live chat now I know that some people use their real names however some people use nicknames so when we say nickname we mean a, a name that isn't your real name so a nickname so a lot of people on the live chat use other names besides their real name or instead of their real name so I'm always intrigued to find out what they actually mean hello Hiroko nice to see you here Ahmed is here as well Guadalupe we have Eric Rashid Nestor also we have Belarusia hello Belarusia thank you very much for your message and also your video I am going to show a little clip from Belarusia's video it's quite a long video and we don't have much time today however I might show the whole video on Sunday if I have time however today I'm going to show a short excerpt from Belarusia's video so thank you very much for sending that and it, it is connected to today's subject which is teeth words and phrases connected to teeth and also your mouth as well so we had some snow this morning sadly the snow didn't last very long it was only around for a very short time if something occurs or lasts for a short time we can say that it was brief so something happened for a very brief moment it didn't occur for very long it only lasted for a short time so this morning's snow the snow that fell this morning in my garden and across the area in which I live was brief brief not very long it was short so something that doesn't happen for very long is short maybe someone performs a song but the song isn't very long it isn't a long song the song does not take very long to sing so we can say that the song is short it is a short song something that is here then gone can be a description of a short event something that did not last for very long we can describe as here then gone he was here then gone so maybe your friend comes round but he or she only stays for a very short time you can say that they were here then gone here then gone <laughs> they only stayed for a very short time oh I like this one here's another one you might blink and miss it so if you blink you might miss it blink 
and you will miss it so sometimes a thing can happen so quickly you might blink and miss it completely blink and you will miss it so keep your eyes open don't blink don't close your eyes because you might miss it especially things that happen very quickly something that happens for a short period of time maybe a certain type of fashion comes for a short time and then it disappears completely without trace we can say that it is a flash in the pan something happened for a very short time it didn't last very long and then suddenly it was gone we can say that it was a flash in the pan who remembers fidget spinners do you remember when fidget spinners were really really popular and everyone had one one of those things that you put between your fingers and you would spin spin the fidget spinner around and then suddenly they vanished they were gone they disappeared you might say that the trend of having a fidget spinner was just a flash in the pan it didn't last very long it was there and then it was gone it didn't last very long at all it only lasted for a short time it was a flash in the pan oh here's another one i like this one here's an interesting one <laughs> something can be here today gone tomorrow so i suppose you could say the same thing once again about fidget spinners they were here today gone tomorrow something that is only around for a short time can be described as here today gone tomorrow here's another one. Oh, i like this one so if something only lasts for a short time we might say that it happened as quick as a flash it was as quick as a flash he came past my window as quick as a flash so someone passed by very quickly you didn't see them clearly it was as quick as a flash quick as a flash another one oh i like this one in the blink of an eye something that occurs quickly something that is very brief something that moves fast in the blink of an eye he was gone in the blink of an eye the thing disappeared it vanished in the blink of an eye something went very quickly maybe if something is moving fast past you you might say that it was just a blur i didn't see him clearly because he was moving so quickly he was just a blur blur the word blur means unclear something can't be made out it is a blur like mr steve behind me you can see mr steve's face behind me mr steve's face is a blur you can't see it clearly however on sunday you will be able to see mr steve's face very clearly finally something that happens quickly happens for a brief moment something occurs briefly for a very brief moment it was here and then it was gone it occurred it happened for a brief moment maybe you see something in the sky at night maybe you are looking up and you sh you see a shooting star going across the sky very nice but you only see it for a brief moment it was there and then it was gone it was only there for a brief moment so there are many ways of describing a, an occurrence or something that happens for a very short time many ways of describing it wow the live chat is very busy today 
hello Irene hello also to oh Pedro Belmont Pedro Belmont is here today nice to see you Pedro <coughs> Pedro Belmont also we have Guadalupe and Christina hello Christina how is the weather in the UK are people worried about the coronavirus or not a very interesting subject many people talking about it I'm not sure how bad it is here at the moment because there seem to be lots of different reports some people saying that we don't have to worry whilst other people are saying we should worry so it depends but yes the coronavirus or covid 19 as they are now calling it is something that's in the news something else in the news at the moment that i suppose i should mention there is a big rally today a very big rally with young people joining together in oxford here in the uk all joining together to protest the environmental damage caused by well everything really everything that humans have invented over the past hundred years however talking of the coronavirus I, I i'm surprised that they've allowed lots and lots of people to get together in a large group to protest environmental damage and the, and the lack of action concerning the environment and trying to turn back all of the damage caused by mankind however today lots of people together in a huge group thousands of people and of course as we all know there are two groups of people who have very poor hygiene <laughs> children and the elderly of which I am one of them <laughs> so Greta Thunberg is there today and of course a lot of people accusing Greta of being a hypocrite because of course she flies around the world in an airplane and as we all know airplanes are one of the causes of environmental damage however I can exclusively reveal to you today the airplane the airplane the aircraft that Greta Thunberg used to fly here to the UK okay maybe it wasn't that one maybe it wasn't that however it is strange that lots of people are getting together in large groups it would appear to be something that is raising quite a lot of concern not only here but also around the world as well oh hello to Nestor hello also to Mika hello Mika I haven't seen you for a long time I know that in Japan the weather has been all over the place we had snow this morning do you want to see it again we had lovely snowfall outside so this is what I filmed this morning when I woke up I got out of bed and I saw that the snow was falling and I felt rather excited to say the least so this morning we had snow we've also had a lot of rain as well <laughs> would you like to see some of the flooding so here is the flooding that took place near my house so from snow to rain so that is actually one of the rivers near my house not very far away from where I live just to give you an idea of just how bad things are at the moment so thank you Mika for saying hello today and thanks for joining me as well it's so nice to see you here another thing I wanted to mention something else to do with the environment as well you see I don't just throw this together I, I do a lot of planning in the morning so everything I'm talking about does fit together we were talking about environmental damage now near my house not yesterday but the day before yesterday we had some people come to replace the street lights 
near near my house in fact right outside my my window of my house <laughs> they've changed the street lights so before they were were very bright and they used to cast the light all over the place in fact this is something that has become quite a big problem and many people feel very strongly about it so this is another type of pollution that many people are getting angry about but this particular pollution is called light pollution so light pollution is when all of the street lights all of the things that exist around towns and cities for for lighting the streets and the buildings they create a large very visible haze and we call this light pollution however these days there are new types of lights that that can actually help to prevent light pollution and there is one of them so this is the type of light that is now outside my house so instead of the old orange light which used to cast all of the light well everywhere so not just downwards but also upwards as well we now have these lovely fancy lights so these particular lights will cast the light downwards onto the road so the light will only go downwards it won't go upwards it won't go up into the sky so this particular type of lighting is now being used in many parts of the world and two days ago we had one of these installed near my house and I must say it does look very different and the one thing I have noticed is there is less light pollution so the light pollution already near where I live has been reduced just by changing the street lights it's quite amazing so what about you what about where you are do you have light pollution so at night when you look out your window especially if you live in a large city or town you might see that the sky is not dark it isn't black it's actually orange and that is caused by the glow from all of the lights lots of light pollution so when we think of pollution it isn't just about the air we breathe it is also about the views that we see or the views that we have from our houses from our windows hello to the live chat oh we are now up to date thank you very much for your company today Rolfie is here hello Rolfie nice to see you as well the coronavirus has the world worried it's just a matter of time before it causes a crisis worldwide since all the countries will be obliged to close their borders well one of the things that's happening here there is already talk uh, in the media on the news about closing schools around the country so here in the UK we are already talking about closing schools and keeping people apart and of course if you feel unwell what's the first thing you do when you feel unwell you will often go to the doctor so apparently there are many doctor surgeries many places where the doctor will work and now they are being closed down because people are going there feeling unwell so there is always a risk of one person going to the doctor because they feel unwell and if they have the coronavirus they might spread it to other people in the doctor's office <laughs> so it is a very difficult one I don't think there is a quick solution to be honest Palmyra wants to talk about light pollution yes light pollution is a big problem says Palmyra you are right yes I think in many places even here in the countryside we have some light pollution however a couple of days ago they've changed some of the street lights near my house and now everything is much darker I mean it was dark before but now it's even darker 
hello Tomek hello also Carlos hello Carlos nice to see you here this weekend we have another storm heading our way can you believe it would you like to see the storm so here is a photograph this is a radar photograph of the storm that is heading our way there it is can you see it <laughs> somewhere so I think I think the green if you look at the green part that is the main part of the storm and it's very interesting they've decided to call this particular storm now when I first read this word I actually read it wrong I, I didn't pronounce it correctly however now I know how to pronounce it now this storm that is now heading towards the UK has been named by the Spanish Meteorological Society or the the organization or group that names the storms <laughs> so this particular storm that is now heading towards the UK is called Storm Jorge Jorge apparently that is how you pronounce it Jorge one or two people are calling it Jorge as well so this particular storm I will try to pronounce it correctly this storm is called Storm Jorge <laughs> and if I didn't pronounce it correctly I, I do apologize so there it is Storm Jorge is on its way and apparently it's going to hit the UK over the next couple of days so we have yet another big storm heading towards us not only that but apparently on Sunday the weather is going to be terrible so I will be with you on Sunday not only will it be March the 1st on Sunday but also we are going to have a big storm storm Jorge apparently that is how you pronounce it in Spanish it is hello to Guadalupe I have listened to how the coils inside light bulbs affect our health as well I haven't heard about that I know certain types of light can be bad for you for example blue light did you know that so many things that you see appear to be white light but in fact there is also blue light coming through the light as well so the way in which the the light rays or the waves of light reach your eyes there might be colors in there but you can't actually see them even though they are actually having an effect on your eyes so there are certain types of light especially from computer screens that give off blue light and apparently it's not very good for your eyes so that is another thing hello to Mika again students will just stay at home without any help from the school I think that is a big problem yes some countries already including China of course China have closed many factories many offices many people are staying at home and of course many schools are also closed in China because of the coronavirus it would appear to be a thing that is not going away soon I think coronavirus is going to be around for a little while longer Tao Dang hello Tao Dang I believe you are watching in Vietnam if so hello Vietnam nice to see you here today the street lights in my neighborhood are only turned on automatically at 6 p.m. when people or the vehicles come close to them and then they turn off at 5 a.m. oh I see so what you are saying is the lights are automatic so when something comes near the light they will come on and then a few seconds later the lights will go off yes I remember something very similar when I was in China whenever I went into the apartment where I lived I would climb the stairs and whenever I arrived at, at the block I used to have to stamp my foot on the ground 
so I had to make a large or loud noise to make the lights come on so yes I remember that from my time in China hello mr. Duncan I sent a message one day warning you that there is a person on YouTube using your lessons did you receive it by messenger oh I see no I didn't know that however there are many people using my lessons stealing them and re-uploading them on YouTube so yes it is a big problem there are many people who like to take my work and all of my lessons and then they use them themselves they make their own YouTube channel using my work we call that stealing theft thank you Christina for letting me know thank you very much we are talking about smiling we are talking about showing your teeth we are talking about going to the dentist and I thought it would be good to have a look at two things first of all here is an excerpt from a video from Belarusia who is in real life a dentist so we're going to have a look at this first and then after this we are going to have a look at one of my English lessons where I talk all about one of my experiences of going to the dentist hi there today I want to teach you a little bit of dentistry yes I think learning is very important this tooth has two holes here one hole and here another this this type of hole ages very very much but this one is silent doesn't age because it is covered with the gum look at this this is germs and what you have eaten thank you very much to Belarusia for that and now here is an excerpt from one of my lessons this is one of my video lessons all about a very disturbing childhood occurrence something that happened to me <laughs> in my childhood when I went to visit the dentist Growing up is not the most pleasant of events. It is often filled with scary moments and unpleasant experiences. Of all the upsetting and traumatic moments from my childhood, one in particular still lingers strongly with me. I would have been about eight years old at the time and I had to go to the dentist for a multiple extraction. This procedure involves the removal of many teeth at the same time in my case it was 10 yes I had 10 teeth taken out in one go this is normally done whilst the patient is under anesthetic in those days they often used nitrous oxide to put you to sleep many of you will know this particular substance as laughing gas So try to imagine the scene, an eight-year-old boy under anaesthetic having ten of his teeth removed. If that wasn't bad enough, after the procedure ended I was not fully revived. I had not come round from the anaesthetic, which meant that my parents had to carry me unconscious through the dentist's waiting room and out to a waiting car. 
my only real memories of this event include the moments just before the laughing gas was given to me via a large rubber mask which was placed over my face in the dentist's chair and much later as I came round from the anaesthetic itself at home even to this day I can still recall the foul taste of stale blood in my mouth not to mention the strange sensation of having ten of my teeth suddenly vanish this horrific experience put me off going to the dentist for many years needless to say these days a trip to the dentist is not as traumatic as it was in my childhood modern dental surgeries are more welcoming and the procedures are over much quicker of course even now going to the dentist still has its unpleasant moments the worst part of it for me must be the scrape or scale this is where the dentist removes the hard plaque that is built up at the base of the teeth with a sharp tool this particular scaling procedure can be very painful indeed it all depends on how badly affected the teeth are so the more you look after your teeth the shorter the scaling procedure will be these days people are becoming more used to taking care of their teeth on a daily basis so much in fact that nowadays doing your own dentistry is becoming commonplace there are lots of wonderful gizmos and tools available now for cleaning your teeth thoroughly at home things that poke things that scrape things that squirt and things that buzz and hum do-it-yourself dentistry is becoming the norm with home dentistry kits now available for purchase on the internet although I wouldn't do it myself without having had some form of guidance or training first surely one of the worst dental procedures of all must be an extraction an extraction is where a tooth is literally pulled out of the jawbone just like I had when I was eight some people even pull their own teeth out I can't imagine anyone wanting to pull their own teeth out can you these days most dental work is carried out with the patient awake and conscious this includes the drilling into and extraction of teeth normally a local anesthetic is used in the form of an injection into the area of the gum where the procedure is to be carried out the injected part of the mouth will become numb thus ensuring that the procedure will be a painless one how often do you go to the dentist do you like going to the dentist when was the last time you went to the dentist neglecting your teeth is not a good thing to do as when you get older they will become unhealthy and fall out bad mouth hygiene has also been linked to other physical ailments such as heart disease and certain types of cancer fortunately for me I learned my lesson before my teeth became too bad which is definitely something to smile about hi there today I want to teach you a little bit of dentistry yes I think learning is very important this 
tooth has two holes. Here, one hole, and here, another. This, this type of hole ages very, very much, but this one is silent, doesn't age because it is covered with the gum. Look at this. This is germs and what you have eaten. And there you go. Thank you once again to Belarusia for your your video. <laughs> Talking all about bad teeth. And there is one word I want to correct you on. Ache. Ache. So pain. When you have pain in your tooth, we describe it as an ache. Ache. So something is hurting. Maybe you have pain that won't go away so the pain is staying with you for a long period of time we call it ache so you have toothache you have toothache so the word ache a c h e ache and that is how you pronounce it ache you have toothache a few days ago, I had toothache and I thought I was going to have to go to the dentist. Fortunately, I didn't have to, which was nice. However, I still need a checkup. I still need to go to the dentist and have a checkup. I think so. Oh, we have a lot of words here to do with teeth and things connected with your mouth. Oh, so. Would you like to have a look at some words connected to teeth and also your mouth? Well, we will in a moment. I won't forget the live chat, of course. We are here live on Friday afternoon here in the UK. I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there, unfortunately. Welcome, everyone, to the live stream English Addict for all those who can't get enough of the beautiful language that is English. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Irene. Hello also to Marina. Hello, Marina. Thank you very much for all of your lovely messages concerning Belarusia's short video. Now, the video is much longer than that. I will show the rest of it on Sunday because we are short of time, but I will show all of it on Sunday. And of course, <laughs> this guy will be with us on Sunday as well. Mr. Steve will be with us. We are talking about relationships on Sunday. A very big topic, a very interesting topic. I hope you will join me on Sunday. So here we go. Some words connected to your teeth and also the place where your teeth sit, which, of course, is your mouth. When we say mouth, well, mouth can be used in many ways actually to describe anything that has an opening so mouth basically is the opening of something so as something opens you will see the mouth or maybe an opening that can be entered you can say the mouth of the cave so the mouth is the opening so we can use mouth Besides describing this part of the body, this part of the body that I use a lot in my work. So this is my tool for my job. Without this, I couldn't work. I would have no job whatsoever. So my mouth is very important. <laughs> I like my mouth very much. So when we say mouth, we can describe an opening as well. Another word that we often hear when we talk about our mouths, oral, oral, which relates to anything connected with your mouth. So you might have oral hygiene or oral health 
or if you are using your mouth to speak so anything that you use your mouth for can be described as oral something oral you speak or you use your mouth to do something in particular oral hello to everyone on the live chat oh here's an interesting one i don't know why it's going across my face oratory so when we say oratory it is anything to do with speech making so if you are making a speech or giving a talk <laughs> shall i move that down a bit can, 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 could you please go down slightly you're in my way okay come on down you go quickly I haven't got all day there we go that's better <laughs> oh you can see me now thank you very much <laughs> so something that is oratory is connected to speech making you are making a speech you are giving a speech you are using your mouth to speak something that is oratory so a, a speech or a talk that is being given can be described as an oratory I can see that this one is also in my way let me just move it down slightly that's better here is another phrase <laughs> do you like the way I'm editing this as I go along oh here we go word of mouth so something that is word of mouth something that is word of mouth means something that one person has mentioned to another quite often in advertising word of mouth is a very useful tool not only that it is also free as well so when we say word of mouth it means one person is telling another person and then that person will tell someone else have you heard about mr duncan's lessons really yes they're ever so good <laughs> someone somewhere is saying right now so word of mouth the way things spread when a person tells one thing to another so yes word of mouth how did you find out about mr duncan's lessons we found out through word of mouth so it means the way of something spreading around or something that is mentioned or something that is said we can say word of mouth here's another one to mouth something ah now this is something that is visual so when you mouth something it means you are saying it but the person can't hear what you are actually saying so they look at your mouth they try to read what your lips are saying so you if you mouth something it means you are saying something but you want the person to look at your lips because you are telling them maybe from a great distance so maybe a person is far away and they are trying to tell you something i'm trying to tell you something mr duncan is now on you tube you are looking at their lips so when a person mouths something it means we are looking at what a person is saying we are trying to see what their lips are doing another one now <laughs> if a person is speaking too much maybe they are talking too much for a very long time you might say keep your mouth shut keep your mouth shut or perhaps you want someone to keep a secret so maybe there is a secret that you want your friend to keep you might say don't forget keep your mouth shut don't tell anyone about this all right it is our secret we are going to throw a surprise party next week for mr steve so don't tell anyone don't forget keep your mouth shut <laughs> or maybe before you go into a room you might not want the person to say anything you might tell them before you go in the room 
you might say don't forget keep your mouth shut don't say anything so if you keep your mouth shut it means you say nothing oh here's an interesting one I like this one <laughs> this is one you might hear now and again you might pay or give lip service lip service so once again relating to the mouth your lips you pay lip service if you pay lip service to something it means you say something nice or you discuss a certain thing however you don't really want to talk about it you're not really interested in it you just say it however the person saying it is being insincere they don't really mean what they say they are just giving lip service so maybe a person will talk about a very serious issue but really they don't care about it in reality they don't care about it but they will talk about it anyway they are just giving lip service they are talking about something without really caring about the thing that they are discussing oh here's an interesting one I like this one <laughs> When we think of British people, we will often think of this particular phrase. Keep a stiff upper lip. If you keep a stiff upper lip, it means you stay brave. You you stay confident. You don't let things get to you. You don't show your emotions. You stay resolute. You keep a stiff upper upper lip quite often we think of British people uh, as having a stiff upper lip so when we say a stiff upper lip we are saying that a person stays brave calm and they keep all of their emotions inside they don't appear to be afraid even though they are you keep a stiff upper lip stiff upper lip it means you don't show your fear or your feelings so now we are going to look at words connected to your teeth and also your gums as i said earlier many years ago i went to the dentist as a child and i had a terrible a terrible experience i had 10 teeth 10 teeth taken out at the same time so they took 10 teeth out of my head in one go a very terrible experience and it is one that has scarred me for life to this very day I'm not I, I'm not very keen on going to the dentist even though I have to hello Rolfie Rolfie says what is it called when a person is unconscious and other people pass air to them by putting their mouth on the other person's mouth to help them breathe do you mean mouth to mouth resuscitation so maybe if a person falls unconscious and perhaps you can't feel their heartbeat maybe there is maybe there is no pulse you might have to give them mouth to mouth resuscitation so you will introduce air into their lungs by blowing into their mouth and it is part of what we call first aid so when you give first aid if you have to give first aid to someone it means that you are helping them to recover from a serious event maybe they have collapsed maybe you can't see if they're breathing or not you're not sure you have to give them first aid so yes we call it mouth to mouth resuscitation or of course you can also call it the kiss of life as well so if you help a person to breathe again by blowing into their mouth we call it the kiss of life or mouth to mouth resuscitation so I hope that helps you there Rolfie teeth and gums there are many ways of describing your teeth the beautiful things that are in your head <laughs> if you are very lucky you will keep your teeth 
forever. However, some people are not so lucky and they will lose their teeth. So we can call teeth gnashes gnashes what about that so if you call your teeth gnashes you are describing the appearance of the teeth because they are sharp your teeth are sharp they are used for biting and for tearing and for chewing so we call them gnashes gnashes I like that you can also call them pearly whites if you are really lucky you can have white teeth like this so your teeth are lovely and white and this is what they look like you have lovely white teeth your teeth are pearly white do, do, do. so if you are one of those lucky people who still has their teeth you are very lucky indeed that's all I can say we can use the word tooth in a well-known phrase you can say that something has been fought red in tooth and claw we can say that something has been fought for violently or viciously it has been fought red in tooth and claw so when we are talking about teeth and claws normally these are things that you use or maybe animals will use when they are fighting so it is a way of expressing a very bitter or violent fight something that has occurred violently it has happened red in tooth and claw here's another one bite when you bite something it means you push your teeth down onto a piece of food bite bite so you might bite the bullet this is a well-known expression in English it means that you do something to help you cope with something you bite the bullet so maybe you have to do something that you don't want to do maybe there is a job that you don't want to do but you still have to do it unfortunately you will have to bite the bullet you will have to go through and do the thing that is being asked unfortunately you have to bite the bullet you have to accept the thing that you have to do unfortunately <sighs> chew the fat oh I like this one if, if you chew the fat it means that you talk about things so maybe you go to your next door neighbor and you have a conversation with them you talk about things generally you will chew the fat you will talk about something generally you chew the fat so if you are with your friend and you are chewing the fat it means you are having a conversation it is a great expression that we use in English here's another one if you are determined to do something if you want to win if you want to win a contest or a competition you might have to fight tooth and nail to get that thing so to be very aggressive when you are doing something something you really want maybe you are waiting for a sale to begin in a shop and then suddenly lots of people rush into the shop you will fight tooth and nail to get that bargain I must get it I must get that super duper bargain I really must I will fight tooth and nail to get that bargain you will do whatever it takes you will fight ferociously without giving up you can also <laughs> sink your teeth into something if you sink your teeth into something it means you get heavily involved in doing something so you are very enthusiastic about it you really want to do it you can't wait to do it you can't wait to sink your teeth into something it means you can't wait to do it you are so excited and then maybe the thing that you are doing you are really involved 
you are so involved with the thing that you are doing you sink your teeth into something you are doing it enthusiastically here we go interesting word tooth of course tooth can be expressed in many ways we can use the latin which is where it comes from as well dent so in latin the word tooth is dent and that is the reason why we say dentist and in greek we can say odont and of course you can also call a person who is a dentist an orthodontist as well so the word tooth is actually an interesting word and there are other ways of expressing that word as well the surface of your teeth so when you look at someone's teeth they normally look nice and white like this so the surface of your teeth is called enamel enamel the hard white surface of your teeth that is what protects your teeth from damage enamel enamel and of course if you eat a lot of sugar a lot of sweet things or things that contain a lot of acid fruit juice for example even though it's good for your body it can be bad for your teeth so the enamel is the outside of your teeth hello to the live chat nice to see so many people here again hello lan hello i'm planning to come back to Taramo. oh it, it sounds to me as if lan is planning a big trip i think so hello also anna hello to oh hello to francesca hello also to sweetness again lots of people getting involved today Pat Chu is here. The best of luck from Nepal, which is very close to our neighboring country, China. Pat Chu, I think you are referring to coronavirus, which of course is something a lot of people are talking about at the moment. Inside your teeth, there is something called pulp, or it can also be called dentine as well. So the thing that is inside, your teeth is a very soft material and that's the reason why the outside of your teeth are hard and tough to protect the inside of your teeth and then of course right inside your teeth we have the nerve nerve the thing that creates the sensitivity as you saw earlier when we when we watched Belarusia's video you saw Belarusia showing us what happens when your teeth start to go rotten and that's the reason why you get toothache because the nerve has been exposed so that's the reason why we have toothache the nerve is the sensation receptor so the nerve is responsible for the feeling in your teeth so if you have bad teeth if your teeth go bad you might end up with toothache because the nerve the nerve has been exposed not very nice i know i have to go to the dentist i do i know a lot of people keep reminding me <laughs> i will make an appointment very soon to go and see my doctor or my dentist hello Tomic through word of mouth or by word of mouth you can say both you can say that something has been spread maybe some information or maybe some news has been spread through word of mouth or by word of mouth so by the action or through the action of talking to each other so one person will tell another person about something that is word of mouth that is word of mouth hello palmyra again mr duncan i think you have a sweet tooth 
I have to admit yes I do I, I do have a sweet tooth I like eating sweet things very much yes it is not a secret that I like eating sugary things sweet things it is true here's another one another expression connected with teeth it is just like pulling teeth pulling teeth so quite often when you try to pull a tooth out it, it sometimes isn't easy so quite often it can be very hard to pull someone's tooth out of their head <laughs> so if you if you have your teeth pulled out it isn't an easy thing to do it isn't so if something that you are doing is not easy to achieve or maybe you are trying to achieve something and it isn't happening easily you can say that it is just like pulling teeth it is so hard to do getting an answer from my neighbor is like pulling teeth my neighbor will not reply to my questions they will not give me a response so something that doesn't come easily is like pulling teeth a very good expression the person that will work on your teeth or repair your teeth so when you go to the dentist the field of expertise is dentistry so the field of expertise the area in which a person will work if they are a dentist is dentistry dentistry so you are involved in dentistry that is what you do you are involved in dentistry in American English we will often use orthodontist so an orthodontist is a person that checks your teeth or if your teeth have a problem they will repair your teeth or if your teeth are really bad they will pull your teeth from out of your head <laughs> and as I said we go to the dentist so normally here in the UK we will say dentist British English dentist in American English orthodontist normally so what does the dentist do why do we have the dentist the dentist is there to protect and to make sure that you have good dental hygiene or oral hygiene so when we talk about oral it is something connected with your mouth so oral hygiene refers to the cleanliness or how clean and healthy your mouth is oral hygiene earlier Belarusia talked about decay when your teeth start to rot you might get a cavity cavity just means an indentation or hole so something that is formed such as a hole so it's very similar to a hole something that has formed something that has appeared so quite often if a person eats too much sugary food they might get a cavity quite often in their back teeth so you will find that many people will get a cavity they will get a cavity in their back teeth because of eating too much sugar a bit like me and as I said just we can use the word decay so decay simply means to rot something starts to rot or decompose so if your tooth has decay it means parts of your teeth are starting to dissolve they are starting to be de be damaged because of the acid in your mouth and you can get acid from anything sweet things also fruit juice any type of fruit they can cause damage to your teeth 
so even after you eat fruit you should always make sure that you clean your teeth so you don't get decay finally <laughs> this is my favorite of all of the words we've looked at today i think this must be my favorite one are you ready have you ever been near a person who has halitosis have you ever been near someone who has bad breath a person who has halitosis has bad breath in other words as they speak or as they breathe out there is a terrible odor coming from that person's mouth that person has halitosis they have bad breath there are many reasons why we have bad breath maybe you have poor oral hygiene maybe your teeth are starting to rot in your head perhaps you have some food that is stuck between your teeth and the piece of food is starting to go rotten in your mouth so there are many reasons why you might have bad breath or you might have halitosis let's do it properly halitosis you have bad breath do you know anyone who has bad breath maybe Belarusia says thank you very much for the today's lesson I I need all of this vocabulary you've taught us today you are welcome many people are many people have cavities even if they don't eat sugary food yes there is another reason why you can have cavities you can have tooth decay and one of them this is a strange one is because of your saliva so the water that is produced in your mouth saliva is the liquid that is produced in your mouth you might sometimes spit something out quite often there will be saliva and sometimes the saliva in your mouth can be acidic however some people are very lucky and their saliva is not acidic it is actually alkaline so i think i have a feeling that my my saliva might actually be alkaline so i'm quite i'm quite lucky about that really i think i'm quite lucky patchu says people that smoke normally have bad breath i think so yes quite a quite a lot of people who smoke cigarettes will have bad breath quite often we will say that they that their breath smells like an ashtray <laughs> oh I don't know why my boss is always smoking and when he speaks to me his breath it smells like an ashtray it smells like something you will put cigarettes inside after you've smoked them so an ashtray a person's breath might smell like an ashtray Ugh, disgusting really is Emmanuel says never eat garlic during your dinner the day after you will have some problems with social relationships thank you Emma Emanuela you are right I am one of those people I am a person who loves garlic very much so quite often I will have garlic on my my lunch or my supper I will have something with garlic inside for example tonight I'm going to have a meal tonight that has garlic inside it and then tomorrow I'm going to see my mother as well so I'm going to see my mother tomorrow and I'm pretty sure that she's going to complain about my breath because it will smell of garlic and my mother does not like garlic not at all she does not it is always best not to eat garlic during your dinner because afterwards it will smell bad yes I think so I think you're right there so a great word there I hope you've enjoyed that word because that is one 
that you never want to hear another person say to you you never want someone to say do you mind if I tell you something I think you might have halitosis you might have bad breath your breath smells bad your breath is stinky it smells bad and quite often bad breath is a sign of poor oral hygiene maybe you have a problem with your teeth maybe you have tooth decay or maybe there is a piece of food stuck between your teeth what happens when your teeth fall out when your teeth fall out then well you have only one choice really you have to have false teeth so if you all of your teeth fall out if you are unlucky enough to have all of your teeth fall out unfortunately quite often as we get older our teeth will fall out if you have no teeth you will have to have false teeth we also call these dentures dentures so dentures are false teeth and you put them in your mouth and it looks as if you have teeth however they are not real they are false they are false teeth they are called dentures dentures I am going in a moment Jamelia oh that's a good piece of advice by the way thank you Jamelia Jamelia says Mr Duncan you can always put a mint in your mouth quite often people will put peppermint in their mouth or perhaps they will use mouthwash to make sure that their breath smells lovely like a lovely spring day so yes there is nothing worse than having bad breath nor zone hello nor zone and a big hello to your show as well what is the difference between stingy and frugal stingy and frugal there is a difference between those but generally speaking it means a person who doesn't like to spend money however stingy a stingy person is a person who never likes spending money they don't want to spend money on anything a stingy person they want to keep their money they will never buy a meal for someone they will never be generous with their money so a person who is stingy is a person who doesn't like to spend their money they like to keep it for themselves however a person who is frugal is a person who is careful with their money so they are very careful how they spend their money stingy is a little more offensive frugal means that a person is sensible with their money in other words they never waste their money so a frugal person is a person who spends their money wisely a stingy person is a person who doesn't like to spend money at all on anything or anyone they will never treat their friend to a meal they will never buy gifts for their friends or relatives because they are very stingy stingy person thank you very much for your company today it's been lovely to see you all here it is friday of course this is the final live stream of february have you had a good february has it been a good month it's a short one only 29 days however we have march just around the corner and i will be with you on the first of march which is which is of course this sunday so i will be with you on sunday 2 p.m uk time don't forget also can i just ask you to like yes don't forget to like and also subscribe as well like and subscribe like and subscribe if you like what you see give me a like and if you want to stay in touch with me you can also subscribe as well like and subscribe thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream i've enjoyed it a lot thank you noemi 
i hate orthodontic treatment it was very useful but i had i had to go through a lot of pain because of it well that's the reason why i don't like going to the dentist i don't like going to the dentist because of the pain i'm always afraid that the treatment will be painful so that's why i don't like going to the dentist that's the reason why <laughs> rolfie says a stingy person wants to eat their cake they want to have their cake and eat it they want everything they don't like to give anything away they want everything for themselves you might describe a, t a stingy person as selfish or tight fisted a tight fisted person is a person who doesn't like to spend money they don't like to spend money on anything they are stingy patchu says february was a good month i hope so let us hope that march will be a good month because it's just around the corner that is when i am back with you don't forget to give me a lovely like once again please like and subscribe if you like what you saw tell a friend if you don't like what you saw <laughs> tell me okay thank you very much palmyra thank you nestor thank you for this nice lesson have a great day and see you on sunday i will be with you out on sunday yes i am out and about on the internet once again and don't forget this guy where is he there he is this guy will be here as well on Sunday. Mr. Steve will be with us on Sunday and we are going to talk about many things, including relationships. How easy is it to find a relationship? How easy is it to keep a relationship? Maybe we can talk about the best types of relationships, family relationships, or maybe your lover or your partner which is easier which one is the easiest maybe friendship is friendship easy to find all of those things we will talk about on sunday when mr steve comes to join us as well thank you very much to everyone today thank you very much for your company so many people saying goodbye the list is so long <laughs> so many people want to say goodbye thank you martha thank you luis mendez Thank you, Morella. Thank you, Belarusia. Thank you very much for your lovely company today. I've really enjoyed it. I must be honest with you. It's been an interesting lesson, even though I've been talking about a subject that I don't really like talking about. Going to the dentist. Thanks, Isabella. Thank you, Rosa. I've really enjoyed this lesson. I hope you have too. The captions will be available later. You can have captions later. And of course, don't forget, you can watch them live as well. So you can always watch the live stream with captions. They will be available later on as well. Don't forget that. So many things to tell you before I disappear. Don't forget once again. <laughs> this sounds very desperate, I know. But please like and subscribe. If you like my lessons, that will allow YouTube to tell everyone about my super duper English lessons and when they are on. So I know a lot of people are not being told about when my lessons begin. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you, Noemi. Thank you, Hien. Hien Nguyen. Hien Nguyen. Thank you very much. Patchu. Thank you very much as well. Hello, Anna thanks for saying hello to me and yes i'm glad to hear that you've enjoyed the lesson thank you very much back on sunday 2 p.m uk time we'll have a look outside the window first of all would you like to have a look outside here is the view outside right now and here is another view oh look can you see the blossom on the cherry tree so yes it really does look as if spring is on the way because the cherry tree now has some lovely blossom coming out 
it really does feel as if spring is on the way march is just around the corner i will see you on sunday the first of march a brand new month lots of things coming your way and of course until the next time we meet here on youtube you know what's coming next yes you do until sunday 2 p.m uk time this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thanks for watching me today i really do appreciate you joining me and giving up a little piece of your day to watch me and of course until we meet again some sunny day. Ta-ta for now.